Hello. Um, good morning. Uh, Grigorg is going to talk about uh, how to integrate uh, new contributors in Teams. Uh, he has experience from uh, Perl Group, which is pretty large, as you know. Um, so here it is. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Welcome, everybody. Uh, as Frank Kleiner said, my name is Gregor Hermann. You may also pronounce it Gregor or Gregor, depending on your accent of English. I hope you will cope with my Austrian accent of English, but I will try to, to give my best. I'm a um, developer now since a bit more than a year. I'm involved in the Debian Pearl group for some three and a half years, I think, now. And well, and I'm interested in, in social aspects of Teams and Debian itself, not only in the code and in the technical details. Some of you might remember that there were two buffs last year in Madel Plata about packaging Teams. We tried to find out, um, well, what works, what doesn't work, what can we learn from each other. And one issue that came up is that no team had a, well, a systematic approach or some guidelines or whatever for finding new members, integrating new members, or for, well, dealing with people in general. So I thought it might be interesting to look at this aspect this year. And I hope we can do it together. This is not a talk. I have to warn you. I will say something <coughs> in the beginning, but then, well, I invite you that we do it together, although this, this setting with the cinema chairs is not ideal for above, but I hope we can manage. Okay. So, yes, I will start with uh, two slides, given a short overview, but uh, my my thoughts for the next hour. And then I will invite you to join me in a little exercise, experiment, however you call it. You can stay seated, it's not dangerous or anything. I think that should take about 10 or 15 minutes together, so then we have time for, for discussion and sharing. And I have just put up a few, a few topics we might discuss about so that we don't get lost completely and have a bit of a structure. Well, and at, at the end, let's try to find a summary together. Maybe there are some ideas we have what could be improved. And yeah, I'm sure we'll get reminded by someone if we are running out of time, so that should be fine. Okay, so the, the title of this buff was Finding and Integrating New Members. Uh, the bigger picture, in my opinion, is if you look at people and teams, that you have something like a, a life cycle, or something like a general model, be it a circle or if you draw it in a, in a swirl, that consists of three stages, or three phases. The first one uh, is the start or beginning or introductory stage, which, which means from the point of view of a potential new member, <coughs> uh, well, that they have to find out about uh, a team and have to actually make the decision to join it and to well, then integrate into the team, find out how it works. And from the point of view of the team or of the other members, uh, you could say that this stage is about finding and integrating new members. The stage two is then the, well, the regular working phase where you just are a member to your regular work. From the point of view of the team, the task or the challenge in this stage is to, well, on one hand, to, to support each, each other, 
and also maybe to keep members to help them from getting burned out or bored or uh, overwhelmed or whatever. And then there's also a third phase which I just labeled the end here which means there might come a point in time where a member decides to, to leave the group, be it actively or be it just by, by going MIA or just becoming inactive. And the challenge for the, the team as a whole or for the other team members at that stage is to, well, to get to a, to a reasonable end, to maybe say goodbye, say thanks or whatever, or to remove them from the project on Elioth to find some, some defined end instead of just letting go. So that's the, the framework in my <coughs> uh, view. And now in this buff I want to look at the first stage and the other ones might be interesting if we uh, have come up with something in the first stage, we might also look at the other ones, maybe in another buff, in the next step, conf or whatever. So this is a long-term project, maybe, if there's interest. Okay, and now I... Uh, what are we going to do now, or what do I expect that we come up with? I think it's important to start with personal experiences. If we remember how it was or is for us as team members. It's easier to uh, think about what it is like for new contributors. So we should think about that and exchange our experiences. Well, and then it would be, of course, great to, to collect some stories from different teams, what works, what doesn't work. And I'm sure we will find some ideas for improvement out of that collection. Okay, now I'd like to invite you to a short exercise, completely non-technical. It's an imaginary journey, if this is the right word in, in English. Uh, it, it's very easy. I would ask you to close your eyes when I say start in a minute. You can leave your laptops open, you don't have to move, you don't have to do anything. And then just to listen to my, well, uh, instructions or proposals on what to think about and try to go back in time and travel back in your memory. Okay, are you fine with that? Well, so let's start. Please close your eyes, if that's okay for you. And let's start the journey. Well, I assume that you are a member of a team, that you are here for that reason. Please now decide which team you want to think about. If you are a member of several teams, Please choose the one you're most involved with or most attached to. And try now to go back in, <coughs> in time to the point where you, where you joined the team or where you first came in contact with the team. It's not important that you find the exact date in your memory, but the, the situation and the, the feeling at the time. When you have arrived in the back uh, in the past, think about how did you how did you learn about the team? Did you find it on on the wiki? 
Did you read about it on some mailing list? So what was the first contact? After this first contact, at some point, you thought about joining the team, and you finally did. Try to remember what, what made you join the team, what triggered this decision, what were the what motivations for applying to become a member. Were just pulled in, <coughs> pulled in by somebody? Did you see advantages like getting free sponsors or getting help for your work from others, free reviews? What motivated you? So when you joined the, the team, you got commit rights or whatever permissions, access to something. What made it, what was helpful in this very beginning? Or who was helpful? On the other hand, were there some things that made it difficult, some roadblocks, some obstacles. Was there anything you had to, to fight before being able to fully contribute to the team? When you joined and took your first steps in the usual work of, of the group, of the team, did you know what was expected from you? Did you know what being a member of this team comprises, which tasks are usually done? Did you know what you could expect from the others? Were there some offers for guiding or mentoring? your first steps, which support did you get and also which support would you have needed in retrospect if you think back? What did you what did you miss during this first few months? Uh, 
Okay, so in this journey back to the introductory phase of you being a member of a group, we have now reached a point where you are a regular member and I now invite you to, to come back to EPCONF9, to Catharis, which, which means if you like you can slowly open your eyes again, maybe shake your head or hands or whatever to wake up again and return to this upper talk room. Okay, I hope it has worked a bit to remember how it was for you. And I would like some people to just tell a bit what came up in their memories, how it was like back then. And yeah, well, however that works. Oh, it works? Yeah. Uh, I will tell you about my involvement in the Pearl Group. I can't remember the date, but it was some, well, four or five years ago when I needed some Pearl module for my stuff at work. And uh, it wasn't packaged. So I wanted to make a package from that. And uh, I can't exactly remember how, how I heard about the group. Mm, it's maybe when reporting bugs to some other modules that uh, I used and when the replies come from the members of the group and something like this, I, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, first contact what with Gunnar Wolf. I don't see him here. Anyway, he might, might not remember. And uh, I have recently found these third messages and I realized that that first contact was very helpful because Gunnar was very friendly. I was making some stupid mistakes <coughs> that are obvious for uh, every experienced packager, but he didn't point fingers and be rude to me, just gently corrected and put me on track. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally even said thank you for your work and I was <laughs> very enthusiastic about this and well a year later I was a very active member of this friendly group already trying to organize some stuff change radically whatever <laughs> which had some successes and some failures And so in the beginning, the important thing was that you were welcomed by, uh, by, uh, by friendly support. Yeah, yeah. I was and very thank much you. welcomed to all my questions, no matter how stupid they are or how many documentation there is on the matter. Somewhere was answered, friendly. It was just great. I mm -hmm. So thanks, Gunnar. You're not here, but you're possibly watching the video someday later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Dan. Someone else who wants to share what came up in their memory? Uh, is it working? Okay, uh, I'm odd. Yeah. Uh, my name is Odette. Yeah, have to put the closer. To closer, that. okay. And I'm involved, for me it was really easy to re recall because it, I was, I started with Debbie and Edu um, some nine or ten months ago. And the reason I, the reason I 
got into it was that I wanted to find a solution for schools with uh, diskless workstations to make maintenance easier. And I, I got to see LTSP. From LTSP, there were pointers to some other projects. And I chose Debian because I was uh, using Debian. Um, OK, so in, in, find, in finding the group, it was helpful that there were some, some links on, on related pages that showed you the way. Yeah, ac actually, mm -hmm. the, what got me to LTSP was that someone has removed the, uh, um, the, the, the um, diskless how-to from, from LD, um, from the, the, the Linux documentation. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I went the other way to, to the server side. Um, I think Debian Edu is probably a little uh, unique in uh, in Debian because it's not about packaging it's about integrating other packages into a ready system so it has a lot of structure it manipulates the installer it does a lot of uh, like system administration in a box so what I felt was if my, my initial, uh, my initial um, idea was to start something very basic, very uh, primitive, and let it grow. And therefore, I would have had knowledge of all the components. And by going the other way and adopting Debian Edu, I faced other problems of understanding what was already implemented, which is pretty mature and quite complex. Um, I, started the, I started by looking at the way Debian Edu um, manipulates the, the Debian installer. And some, some, stage, some stages I could have used uh, some help about how how things are, are working on that level, and it wa it wasn't very it wasn't readily available. But also, I was in Debian mm -hmm. Edu. I was I felt pretty comfortable, uh, pretty welcome, and it was quite easy to to start making contributions and. Uh, get some some code um, into into the system what made it e easy for you uh, Olga <laughs> <laughs> Holger okay so we cheer Holger <laughs> okay so it's again about the the people about welcoming it's, it's a lot about the people mm -hmm. what I feel though that is probably lacking is uh, is structure uh, Structure and what uh, topic? For 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 learning the the system to to see what's um, to to f to learn about the uh, um, about how the system uh, works and how how to get. Uh, you know, some sort of a path for for learning, mm -hmm. and f also for <coughs> for getting in some kind of so something like an, an introductory documentation for new contributors, or something yeah, like that, might be helpful. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of it, but it's not always understood. Like there's also like a lot of different. Don't really know how to. Don't really know how to uh, explain it, but because there's some. There's uh, different kind of projects. And okay, so so it was a bit complicated in the beginning to to find your way around yeah. in the whole and project. The other thing is uh, is culture of free software and free people who. They don't really want. They don't 
want to tell others what to do, but sometimes a uh, person wants uh, just uh, directions, not instructions, just mm -hmm. direction. And, and if, for example, on a mailing list, you may ask a question that uh, people will not answer because either because they don't know they will not write, uh, I don't know, because it's not helpful. Or, uh, but some pe people uh, get the impression that uh, there's no, like they don't get a response, mm -hmm. they don't know mm -hmm. uh, what it means. Okay, so maybe a bit of guidance, mentoring in the first uh, time would have helped you. Okay. Thank you. We've had two teams now, maybe sh a short third statement from a different team. Ah. My name is Peter Reynoldsen and uh, I would like to share with you uh, some of my well, initial uh, experience with joining the Debian installer team. This was a long time ago shortly after Joey has abandoned the project and decided to spend time elsewhere, we in the Debian EDU project uh, discovered that the old installation system didn't do what we wanted. So we had to come up with a different mechanism and decided to go with the Debian installer uh, project. Uh, basically, I was not a Debian, in Debian developer then, and I started just looking at the source, poking around the uh, CVS tree and hanging around on the RC channel and discussing with, well, whoever was left there, I think it was Tollef Fogheim that was mostly active at the time. And we started to work together on improving the installer to get to a point where it could actually install Debian. And I always felt that the Debian installer project or the Debian installer team was very welcoming to people that wanted to do work. They were uh, giving access to the CVS tree without uh, <coughs> a lot of administration or uh, bureaucracy. They would uh, give us the opportunity to help. That was the really important thing to get things working and to actually become part of the team is to be able to contribute easily without having to spend a lot of time proving yourself worthy of the whatever cause mm -hmm. of the project. And so so this low threshold for entering made it easy for you to to get going. Yeah. And the Debian installer team was, was I think the first team in Debian where we would allow anyone to contribute to the CVS and then we had a few people able to actually upload packages. So once a month or so uh, the two uploaders would wrap up all the Debian installer packages like 30, 40 packages and upload it into Debian and see if it, <coughs> it worked. Of course, we had some testing, automatic testing going on and a lot of work to make sure that <coughs> the changes done was actually improving the packages. But still, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't very hard to, to do changes and you were expected to take risks and it wasn't a big deal if you broke the installation. It's, uh, it was a normal way of improving things try and see if it works. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. go back and start <coughs> over or fix the problems mm -hmm. and move forward. I think that uh, attitude in the team is very important to be able to uh, accept new members. Because new members, of course, are new. They don't know all the horrid details of the project and they mm -hmm. are not expected to either. Well, eventually, the story is so complex that nobody knows them. Mm -hmm. All the details of that project, but um, still, it's uh, it kept the uh, low level of threshold to, uh, to enter the project, mm -hmm. I think. And in Debian installer, it's still possible today to move in and work on one specific topic to fix whatever mm -hmm. itch you have in the installer and get that patch accepted fairly mm -hmm. quickly. So the implicit message was, uh, it's fine if you make errors, that's just normals, and we we'll yeah. look what we do with it, it's no problem, just go ahead. I think that's very important to mm -hmm. make it easy for new users new uh, developers to mm -hmm. not be afraid of contributing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Peter. So now, okay, <coughs> screensaver has turned.
turn the screen off completely now. So we've heard some of your experiences now and, I, and in the next stage I now would like to try to collect them and also the other thoughts not only when we were new members but also from our experience now in a bit more structured way. Uh, <coughs> as you see I have not been taking notes now because that would be too much besides speaking and running around. I have set up this more or less empty page on whiteboard.debian.net and I, I'd appreciate it if some of you could just <coughs> take some notes while we're going further. Okay. Well, this could be topics we, we, we can discuss and I'd in, in like to invite all of you to just share your thoughts, also your experiences that you now have with, with new members. As a first uh, issue, that's the question about how do you get to a team, where can the information be found, does it work or is there some, some need for improvement? In this first uh, round now we've heard that well replies to bug reports can be a way to get to know about the team, that links on related pages can be a way to find a team. Um, does anyone have an idea what other ways to advertise your team um, exist and which of them actually are useful and work? Yeah. <laughs> it was good. Thanks. This must work. Yeah. Okay. This, this is working. <laughs> this is work. I have two now, so you will <laughs> listen to me. We okay. hear you in stereo. <laughs> okay, if you loud like that, yeah. But this one is work. Okay. Well, I'm Kurt Gramli from Germany. I said it before in the talk before. I'm doing the project leading in Germany for Debian Edu. So there are some experience and, and let's say, our tricks how to win people. Cool. Uh, that's, so, that's what um, we're looking after. So somebody says, be, be uh, aware when you speak with Kurt. Perhaps you are. After that, you are a member of Tribune Edu. And uh, I have found the different uh, groups and teams uh, in, my, uh, in my time in uh, free software. Uh, but uh, also, I'm politically involved in, in uh, climate change and other things, uh, uh, very important uh, things. So what I want to say, what, what have we done in... I got involved in Debian Edu because we tried in Germany, I'm responsible for some schools and I'm working in adult education. So I had to use in the evening computers with adult person where uh, pupil and students has played in the morning with and the adult person they paid money for. So you see the problem. And uh, in this it's, it's called Volkshochschule. So this was my um, point to come in. And then I saw this free software possibility to get uh, connect to internet from for schools. This is more than 10 years ago now. And um, I started with SUSE, so the normal German way, until you, um, this, uh, until you, you hate to reinstall every, uh, everything from scratch. Then you, well, it was clear. We, uh, this, I, I started to build a Linux user group, as it were in these times everywhere, uh, creating user groups. And this user group uh, helped to uh, build up a big event with uh, more than 60 talks in one day. Um, and then we saw the installation of a German school server. And there were some Debian people besides this installation. And then it was clear we need to have a Debian school server. So we start to design it. And then while designing, there was a mail coming on the Debian list that there are Norwegian guys won a prize. 
Then we start to test this system, but it was in Norwegian. Nobody knows Norwegian. So I, it was the first install system in Norwegian language. I, but I saw the packet list that ha is, must be the same system we, well, then I joined the conference in Oslo, and then so what have we done now for this purpose, what we are discussing now? We built up a wiki, and if everybody asks a question on a mailing list or somewhere, we ask him, oh, could you please uh, take a, an account on the wiki? And it would be nice if you as first build your homepage and say, what you, are you interested in education and what you are doing, what you're knowing? So th this is a page is about, about the people? About the people, about the person. So a, a, a short profile. Yeah. So uh -huh. we started with about 400 pages on the wiki. We have now 4,500. And we have now 400 <coughs> subscribers. They could write in the wiki. And we have more than 200 home pages. So now if you join this, it's all in German, sorry. So mostly in German. That's so if, if you uh, join um, and you build up your home page, it's less than uh, a day. Somebody will ask you, oh, I have the same problem. I have done this, blah, 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 blah. And then we uh, organized. We had our test center. We built up a test center where we can test software and t learning and teaching together. And then we have about once in a month or once two months, we had a meeting. And we invite actively new persons to come and to, to see us, how we work. Mm -hmm. And normally, every time in this meeting, we learn something. We never thought that we learned this. Mm -hmm. There was always some prize and a lot of fun. And there, well, it's no time to sleep while this meeting. And so, but it's similar like here. So, so the, the, the point, of, yeah. the point the of the wiki page is th that you don't join an anonymous group, right. but you know who you're dealing with. Yeah. And so you see a list from the person who is active, okay. because you see the name always in the, in the wiki, and you see the recent changes. And this is then we, s we have some uh, pages you will find. Uh, if you give uh, in Google, if you give Learn Software, the German name for teaching education software, you will the third or fourth hit is our wiki, because we collected a lot of uh, free software, or still unfree software we lo like to, to change. Mm -hmm. So I think recognition is the most important point to, to be aware if somebody is new, and then to contact him and to help him in the first steps. Okay, this this is somebody who has to do this job. <coughs> so this is mainly what I'm doing. I'm not Debian developer, I'm not a um, package maintainer something, but I'm uh, doing something like community management to, to watch this. And there is also some, there should not be a, an, a question on a mailing list not answered, let's say, three, four days. Mm -hmm. There should be a response, any response. And if, well, if not so good public, then a private response. Mm -hmm you are welcome or something, or perhaps join these people or look at these people there, you could find answers yeah. or such mm -hmm. things. So this, this is important. Mm -hmm. And let's me, let me finish. We also sought to build up a way how to become member. And we look at the new member process from Debian and thought, okay, well, this is heavy stuff. We should reduce the, uh, the barrier. We should look. Then we built up something we called new member, um, new member process. Mm -hmm. And it was German. So it was so complicated <laughs> and so bureaucratic <laughs> that it doesn't work because the, the people who has to do the work to help the new members, they were overloaded <laughs> <laughs> to check all, does he have a mail address, does he have this, does he get a t-shirt, does he have it be at, at the meeting and all. So we, we reduce this. And now you can just uh, uh, apply for to be a new member. Then you wait half an year and, and look. Have you done something? Have you been at a meeting? But it's very low. And then we say, OK, you can have an email address, scolinux.de or something like this, some mm -hmm. recognition. You will find it in the German wiki, wiki scolinux.de. Mm -hmm. OK, let's stop here. OK, so maybe one, one question. So af after the people apply, it's your job to uh, to mentor them, to support them, to 
give them some initial guidance. Have I understood this correctly? Yeah. Okay, I think I will talk to you in detail afterwards. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, any other experiences with promoting the team, like we've heard it now? No, okay. <coughs> yeah, reasons for joining, for joining means um, advantages, motivations. Um, my thought behind it was um, which advantages or which, which benefits can, can we offer to potential new members and how can we communicate those benefits um, does maybe some, some group have on a wiki or wherever on their project page something like this is what, you, what we can offer you, this is what you get for free when you join. Are there some experiences in this, <coughs> this area? Okay, Tim. Hi. Um, so I found it really interesting when, um, uh, when I was just getting into contributing to Debian. Um, there's the whole, um, even before the new maintainer process, you have to uh, adopt some packages and so on. And the way a lot of new contributors seem to try and go about it is um, filing ITPs for new software and, and trying to get uh, new packages on their own and then go through the mentors, Debian mentors, Debian mentors list and so on. And that's actually a really quite a difficult process. But um, um, when I started getting involved with teams, one of the big benefits was uh, the, s the sponsorship that uh, um, that it's, it's actually a lot easier to get a sponsor when you're working with particular people with, um, with new people. Now that's something we should probably advertise through the um, documentation for new contributors to Debian more, that, that actually getting, uh, getting into teams like, um, well, whatever, whatever they're interested in is a huge benefit of, of, of joining a team. Mm -hmm. uh, where could we advertise this more? I'm trying to think where people, where people go to look for um, how to get involved in Debian. Um, there is there is a web page on Debian site, but I don't think anyone ever yeah, finds that. Yeah, something how, how to help the help in Debian or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but no, no one finds that. So. Uh, <laughs> um, Somewhere in, somewhere in the mentors .net documentation, because that's where people oh, end oh. up. And um, uh, really emphasizing there that uh, go find a team, because it's great. Mm -hmm. really yeah, yeah, we've heard that also yesterday in, in Dato's talk, I think, as far as I understood the Spanish. <laughs> he advertised it a lot, yeah. OK, uh, and, and grabbing people on Debian mentors list is probably also yeah, a viable yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other ideas on, on communicating benefits? Ah, Lucas? Yes, I think that we generally really suck at saying that we need help. And mm. for example, I was uh, observing Debian for years before I started getting involved in Debian development. And I think that we really need to um, try to send the, uh, send the message that we are looking for new contributors. For example, on Planet, uh, often people talk about what they do, but not uh, where people could help. And it's something that we could use more because people who are Debian users um, and who might get involved in Debian development usually read Planet mm -hmm. Debian. Mm -hmm. And probably uh, listing very concrete, detailed, mm -hmm. small, simple tasks would make it easier than, than to say, well, just join, just help. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Oh, we need it. Yeah, just a small aspect of uh, reasons for joining a team 
is that I think that uh, a team should always make very clear what is the advantage for the package maintainer to join and what's the advantage for Debian as a whole or for the, the team itself to join. Mm -hmm. So that the, the, the new member gets motivated to join. Uh, for instance, uh, the Debian Borg group is, uh, in my opinion, very open, very accessible. It's, it's very easy to, to join. Um, on the other hand, um, um, Perl packages are very small and very easy to maintain. So there's no real reason to maintain one particular package with multiple maintainers. So mm -hmm. it, it might not be clear to everyone uh, f the existence for the Perl group. Uh, why, why is, is it? Ah, okay. And so I think uh, the 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 power groups sh should also do more selling from uh, what is it the real advantage the, the reason of existence of the power group it's not just a collection but there are some uh, synergies that can uh, help to mm -hmm. uh, maintain a large number of packages etc etc okay and so you think if it's clearer what the purpose of a group is then this could motivate people to to join yeah. that it's not just some random version control system where everything ends in yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good. <coughs> well, yes, uh, we have about 11 minutes and three more topics, so maybe we can just, <coughs> just combine them a bit. Um, stepping stones and obstacles, we, we, we've had about, uh, we've heard a few of them which what helps, what makes it difficult. We've had uh, this m mentoring for new members. We've had the idea of maybe some introductory documentation to find your, your way around in the group. The, the obstacle being that it, it, at first look it's a bit, <laughs> might be a bit complex, all the stuff. Uh, yeah, that's also the the last one, integration, ways of support. Does anyone have any, any other ideas or experiences? What is helpful in the first weeks, months, or what would be needed because it was not helpful? I just want just a few words. Uh, I just like to express the point that was Uh, I just like to stress the point that was uh, brought up here that I feel it, I didn't say it and I feel it's the most important is the confidence of the newcomer to to actually write either it's uh, on a wiki or, or code to actually head add his stuff in make him confident to do that because make make him feel like he's being watched and there are people to to fix if he's, mm -hmm. he's doing something wrong. Okay, so that's what Better has said before, that it's okay to, m to make mistakes and then that there will be a, a helping hand around. Yeah, I just wanted to make clear mm -hmm. that I think it's a very, it's probably the most important mm -hmm. aspect. Okay. Um, does any anybody accept could have any experiences with some mentoring in groups? Is anyone doing this that new group members? <laughs> okay. That anyone is assigned a mentor, or that there are unofficial people who, who, grab the, who grab the newcomers and try to help them? Is there something we could learn? Okay, then I will try to talk to Kurt afterwards and we will try to summarize these experiences. Uh, yeah, mutual expectations, that's about the, <coughs> the question. Um, do new contributors know what will happen to them when, th when they join a group? 
should they know? Is there, does any group have something like requirements? I mean, one thing I remember is that when the FTP masters asked for new uh, FTP assistance, that they said, okay, you should have five to 10 hours time per week, and it would be good if you knew Duck or whatever, code and, and language, and you should be familiar with licenses and, and stuff like that. Are there some other experiences with such descriptions or lists of requirements? Is it useful or is it maybe not helpful in the context of free software? Okay. Oops. Well, we have a, a um, description in our wiki. And we, we looked around what, what exists and we found this Ubuntu uh, declaration for not to beat each other, not to bite mm. each other and all these things. We reduce this a little bit uh, or we, we reduce this to so little things because we have also experience on flameworks, on mailing lists and so on. We try to reduce this so that it be kindly. And Well, the special thing in Debian Edu is uh, we are um, handling um, teachers. Nobody else in the world has more fear to make mistakes than teachers. So it's, it's a special way to learn that free software to make mistakes is a good thing because it's a thing to learn. And this is for teachers very difficult. So often a, a lot of traffic is firstly going in private emails and then they need some help to allow and to use his name publicly on a mailing list who is public um, uh, saved. So every student or pupil will find the, in Google the teacher's name. So it's a special, special thing. So we had to, mm -hmm. we had to be uh, aware of this. Is. So I think um, to help somebody to, to get the first step and also to, to find out what is his real interest. There are so different interests to join a group recognition to, to spend his life in, in, a, in a, I don't know the English word, sinvolle, auf sinnvolle Art sein Leben zu verbringen und, und nicht irgendwie mm -hmm. blöd vor der Klotze zu hängen oder so. Meaningful way of life. Yeah, yeah. meaningful way of life. So to find out what, what is his purpose, what he, what he wants to do and to give him some examples what he can really do. Some mm -hmm. small jobs so that, that he in, could be involved into the community. Mm -hmm. This is often needed. Well, as I see. So it's not that you have requirements like you have to spend so and so much time and you have to have this and that uh, technical experience, but it's more like, like offerings, what they can yeah. do and what yeah. they can uh, gain out of, of yeah. it. Yeah, and also this mm -hmm. practice to, to make it as transparent what you are planning, what you are doing. So I, uh, you find in the wiki in my, under my name you find goals. I have listened publicly my goals, what I want to reach in 2000, 2003, 2004, okay. and that, there you see, didn't reach, didn't solve, didn't, still not, okay. still on work, and so, but, so it's, it's a kind of professional uh, work as I do it in my company, where, where, mm -hmm. uh, where I have goals, I try to reach them and try to, well, and, and a special thing for mentoring, what I'm doing, a special thing is the, I don't know the English word, I have given a talk about open management at the Linux talk in Chemnitz, perhaps somebody, there is the, the sound also. Um, is I use this thing called in German Wiedervorlage. I don't mm -hmm. know what is it in English, so I, I just, I have a very small system, a grown shop who gives me um, a um, reminder that I should contact these people if there nothing has happened meanwhile. So if there's something I, I suspicious, then I do a Wiedervorlage, and four weeks later he reminds me. And then I contact these people, what's going on with you? Ah, okay. Why you didn't answer, Why, what's happening with you? So a lot of family stuff and all these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's coming to this, all these Debian developer, they getting father, getting children like Peter and others, and they, that will change a lot, uh, change a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, of life. So and that gives them the feeling that you care about them. Right. Yeah, this is important. But the big problem is if somebody is not able to handle with me, 
That's the problem also. Okay. So I, I, I look for some advisors who, who are carefully looked that I'm not only the good dictator, not so that they control me or I ask them not to, to uh, but there's also bad or hard experience emotionally what you have to be aware when you do such a job. Mm -hmm. You will lose a lot. You invest in people, a lot of love, and you, well, they go away and you had to get to be aware that they go away without saying thanks or something. You should go your way. So that's it. Okay, thank you. I think we have one minute or something like that. Hmm? Four minutes? Ah, so my clock is late. Okay. So yeah, do we, do we have a conclusion except that I hope everybody has taken notes of every good ideas in this whiteboard? And I will send them up in a mail and on, on wikidebian uh, org slash team slash something. Is there something, some, some final thoughts about uh, this step should be taken, this step should be done, some <coughs> next uh, action item on this topic? <laughs> okay. If there are no more ideas, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and also for contributing. Doing a session like that that relies on, on input from the audience is always a bit a bit of a risk because everybody might just hang around on IRC. But you were really active and I enjoyed it. As I said, I will try to, to wrap it up and mm, mm, maybe work a bit further on this issue. So thanks, everybody, and see you later. Yeah.